Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com and in this video I will show you how to name aromatic compounds. Benzene is the most common aromatic compound that you will see in organic chemistry and can be represented as six carbons in a ring with alternating double bonds and a single hydrogen on each carbon. This structure can be simplified by drawing a hexagon with three pi bonds recognizing that the pi bonds can resonate in the molecule. This can be further simplified by drawing a circle in the center of your hexagon to show the resonating pi electrons. Aromatic compounds were studied long before their names were formalized and so the IUPAC name reflect their common names. Your professor will likely have you memorize a very long list. I will show you some here but you can download a more detailed list on my website at layerforsci.com slash aromatics. When you have an OH coming off your benzene ring, you can recognize this as an alcohol that would be named benzenol, but is commonly called phenol. When you have a CH3 or methyl group coming off your benzene ring, this methylbenzene is actually called toluene. When you have an NH2 on your ring, this is benzenamine, commonly called aniline. An OCH3 or methoxy substituent off your benzene ring would be methoxybenzene, but is called anisole. A carboxylic acid off your benzene ring will be benzoic acid and an aldehyde will give you benzaldehyde. When you have a vinyl group, which is two carbons double bound to each other coming off your benzene ring, this would be called vinyl benzene but has the name styrene. And we'll finish off with an interesting example. When you have NO2 off your ring, this is called nitrobenzene. And what's interesting about this is even though NO2 has no charge, when you draw it out you have a nitrogen coming off the ring double bound to one oxygen and single bound to a second. The single bound oxygen has six lone electrons or three lone pairs with a formal charge of negative one and your nitrogen has a formal charge of positive one which plays a major role in EAS reactions. When you have benzene as a substituent of a larger molecule, this is a phenyl group. Students often confuse the phenyl group with a benzyl group which actually has a CH2 coming off your parent chain and then the benzene ring. Phenol is another molecule often confused by name, however phenol is an alcohol and phenyl is your benzene substituent. Because the benzene ring is slightly complicated to draw, you may often see the substituents simply listed as C6H5 for phenyl, which is simply a benzene group, or C7H7 for benzyl, which is a toluene group. We'll use this molecule for our first example. We have a parent chain that has a total of four carbons, which we can name from the right, giving benzene a number two, or name from the left, giving the alcohol number two. Since OH has a higher priority than the phenyl group, we have the number from the left and get a total of four carbons for a first name of Butte. Only single bonds in the parent chain gives me a last name of Ain, and an OH functional group on carbon two gives me the suffix to all. And last but not least, Having a benzene ring coming off carbon 3 gives me the substituent 3-phenyl. I pull the 2 from all in front of the parent name, allowing me to drop the E and ane for a final name of 3-phenyl-2-butanol. In this example, we have both a triple bond and a benzene ring on my parent chain. Again, I start by identifying and highlighting the parent chain, and then number it from the direction that gives me the total lowest set of numbers. If I number from the left, I hit the triple bond on number 3. If I number from the right, I hit benzene on number 2. And so I number from the right for a total of 6 carbons and a first name of hex. A triple bond on the parent chain on carbon 3 gives me the last name of 3-ine, and a benzene substituent off carbon 2 gives me the prefix 2-phenyl. I can pull the number 3 in front of hex for a final name of 2-phenyl-3-hexine. Don't let the complexity of this example fool you. We simply have a parent chain with multiple functional groups and substituents, and so we'll apply the puzzle pieces slowly to make sure we catch everything. The parent chain will be the cyclohexane, and since the ketone is highest priority, we have to ensure that the ketones get the two lowest numbers. I can start from one ketone, work my way to the second, giving them the numbers one and three, and continue in that direction for a total of six carbons in my parent chain and a first name of hex. Since the six carbons occur in a ring, I have the prefix cyclo, and only single bonds in the ring gives me a last name of ane. Having two ketone functional groups on the molecule 
gives me the suffix 1, 3, di on, where 1 and 3 tell me where each one occurs, and di tells me that I have 2. While the substituent is a benzene ring, this is not a phenyl group because I also have the CH2 connected to it as one larger substituent. This gives me the prefix of 5-benzyl rather than 5-phenyl. I pull the numbers 1 and 3 in front of the word cyclo for a final name of 5-benzyl 1,3-cyclohexanedione. This example was shown to me by a confused student who wasn't sure how to find the parent chain. While it looks tricky, simply identify the central carbon atom and see if you can find the longest carbon chain. In this case, we have a symmetrical molecule with a total of three carbons for a first name of probe. Only single bonds on the carbon gives me a last name of ane, and an OH functional group on carbon 2 gives me the suffix 2-ol. Having the benzene substituent on carbon 2 gives me the prefix 2-phenyl. I pull the 2 in front of the word probe, drop the e in ane, and get a final name of 2-phenyl, 2 2-propanol. 2 We'll end part one with an interesting example. At first glance, this looks like a complicated molecule. However, if you look closer, you'll notice that your parent chain has one single carbon. This one carbon gives me a first name of meth, and since I cannot have any double bonds on a single carbon chain, I get a last name of ane. I have two phenyl groups coming off of the single carbon, which would give me the prefix 1,1-diphenyl. However, since the parent chain only has one carbon, the number one is understood and can therefore be omitted. This gives us a final name of diphenylmethane. Be sure to join me in part two of this video, where I show you how to name disubstituted benzenes using the ortho, meta, and para designators. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook. 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry using the link below or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Leofersai. There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.